At times, we all feel lost in search of something more. This is Christina Dam, and this is Liberate the Podcast, a podcast designed to help inspire and guide you forward through everything spirituality, creativity, art, and just giving you a sense of empowerment so that you can be powerful, be magical, and be free. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Liberate the Podcast. Today, we are welcoming Fabio with us, and he is an amazing tarot reader. He also has done numerous events with us in the past. He's doing some events with us in the future. Uh, different themes to these events can even incorporate, like we have abundant Venus coming up, and so he dabbles in astrology as well. Um, but, you know, his kind of go-to is the tarot, but we're going to learn a little bit about his spiritual journey and how he got to here, as well as some of the workshops and classes and his particular style of reading. Well, Welcome. Happy. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. I'm happy to have <laughs> you. So um, do you want to share a little bit about like how you even got into reading? You know, I always think that that's fascinating. Like normally, like sometimes people like are pulling cards when they're like a young little kid, you know, but you know, wh where did your journey into spirituality oh my, start? It's so interesting because actually I do come from a family of actually uh, healing. Something, something I felt that I mean, maybe I'm a little intuitive too. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so my, from my mom's side of the family, my grandma was actually the uh, healer of the village you know she's italian but i grew up in brazil okay so it was a small village in in southern brazil and she was the healer of the of the village from my dad's side there was a uh, there was a healer too okay you know and i was always very intuitive since i was since a very young age and i didn't really know what it was you know until later on when you know it hear that once that one little voice oh take a right don't take a left yeah you know things like that where you know, I didn't know where it's coming from. And then I take right, I didn't hear my intuition or whatever. I take, and then like, oh, there was an accident. Yeah. You know, like, oh, I should have taken the other route and things like that. So I started to pay more attention. But actually, it really started when my dad transitioned. My dad passed away because mm -hmm. I started to feel him around the house. So you were young when that happened? Uh, that was actually, no, I was in my 30s. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> no, hold on, late okay. 20s. Wait, Oops. wait, you know, I'm just, I'm just going through this, you know. <laughs> You're talking about growing up in a village yeah, in Brazil. Yeah, I'm here. No. <laughs> so, okay. So in, 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 your, in your 30s, uh, your dad passed us away and you could feel his presence. Yes, yeah, so I started feeling my dad present. And um, then I remember one day just being in my car and I said, I, I have a feeling my dad's in my house. And I just said, Dad, if you need to communicate with me, we need to find a different way because this is not the way. Mm. You know, I don't want to talk right now. I'm not ready for this. There was always a lot of resistance okay. towards anything like this from my side, you know. And then uh, at some point when I was studying acting, a, a close friend of mine said, hey, I really think you're very intuitive. And I think, what if you take some classes on, I don't know, clairvoyance, because I actually think you have it mm. and you just don't know. Like, why don't you go and take these classes, you know? And so your friend said this to you because I'm sure that you were saying yeah, things yes. like you 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 would always maybe say certain things and they're like, well, how did you know that? Or why do you know that? Yeah, exa you know, okay. exa so what I did for a while, uh, what I would do to use my intuition is that I just put myself in the position of the person and then things would come to me naturally. That was my way of channeling, but I didn't know what I was doing that. Yeah, you were just giving people advice at that point, right? <laughs> you know, like, let I me see, like, like <laughs> I think that this is, you know? Yeah, so it was like that for, for quite a bit. And... Uh, then uh, that's what, and I remember my friends from acting were saying the same thing. They're like, oh my God, you know so much. How do you know that this person was feeling this way? And that, so anyway, this one friend of mine said, you know, there is a school in Santa Monica. They teach clairvoyancy. It's a two year, it's a two year program. Like, but you have to be ready to go because there's lots of things happen. You start saying things and, and there is this class and that class is like, oh my God, but, but you're going to get to know yourself more. And then maybe you can be a better writer. You can be a, a better actor, you know? And so I went, <laughs> little did I know what I was walking into, you know? Uh, it was great. So it was a two-year program. Oh, so uh, you were walking into a two-year program so or you are walking into a, a smaller class that ended up then growing to two years? No, no, it was a two-year program. Oh, I wow. went there, I interviewed with the, uh, with the person that, with the lady, the director that ran. And I remember she told me a few things about myself that I didn't know or that made sense. 
and she asked me what I wanted out of the out of the uh, the class, and I said I just want to be able to protect myself energetically more because I feel drained mm -hmm. sometimes, very easy. She's like, oh, you're gonna learn that very easy, you know. And then um, then she um, then I started, and my teacher was amazing. And then things started to make sense more. And as we were into, it was a 13 month program plus six more months of uh, energetic medicine. Okay. You know, so it was like quite a long, it was like, it was a real commitment, you know, and it was once a month. Talk about trusting yourself, right? You know, <laughs> I mean, like just trusting the divine or whatnot. I mean, hey, I don't know what I'm getting into, but I'm going to sign up for two years and we'll see where it goes. <laughs> Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, we started with 14 and only four graduated. <laughs> Just that oh, it was wow. rough. It was rough. It was like, it was definitely a very intense because you're reading strangers at some point. You're reading people you didn't know and you don't know. But then somehow things start to make sense and they start to getting more confidence and more confidence. I started to really understand that part of me that was able to just give people information. You know, I was like, okay, I'm just a delivery boy here. How can I get the information faster and help people? How can I avoid some of, of, of mistakes people have done where they're giving me ratings too? You know, mm. so there was a whole process of discovering that, you know, and there was, um, it was, yeah, it was very, <laughs> it was fun. It was very, it was fun for a while, you know, and we'd get in a line and then somebody would come in and we had our eyes closed and there was the person, we would never see the person, just our eyes closed the whole time. And then each person would read something on the person, you know, each one of the readers would read, say something about the person, you know. And you'd wait your turn. And uh, it was great because it actually helped me so much with so many things. It helped me to be more present. I definitely learned how to ground. Mm -hmm. I started learning how to do... I was already learning about fear, f energy of the fear and dealing with that. And definitely that grounded. And I learned a lot, you know, how to navigate when I'm feeling fearful, you know. And... Um, it was, yeah, it was definitely a, a night opening to another world. And then slowly I ended up meeting more people. I ended up meeting someone on an airplane, you know, and uh, this person that was a tarot reader and she was kind of a guidance. She was kind of a, a life coach and a tarot reader, you know, and I ended up doing a life coach thing with her for like two years into the whole <laughs> I'm just gonna dive in. I like these two-year programs, you know. Like, I'm so, not sure that I want to use this, or I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with it. But like, I'm just gonna explore. But I love yeah. that, you know. Like, that's a, if for those that are listening, you know, a, a lot of times, a lot of the guests that we have in here when they tell a story, it's about trusting, right? Mm -hmm. And it's about maybe you don't know where you're going and where that outcome is going to lead you, but you just say yes. Yeah. You say yes to what's presented in front of you. Yes. And you allow yourself uh -huh. to dive in and see, maybe that leads you exactly to the next step. Maybe that just was this shortcut that got you to this other path. You know, like we don't really know, but this ability, and it seems like you did that so naturally. You were like, okay, let me explore this and, Is and I'm going to commit. And for, you know, to have less than 20% of the people that started finish a program that also says not not only do I want to commit, I'm going to see it through. Mm -hmm. And then meeting somebody else on a plane and saying, okay, this feels right too. I'm going to say yes to this, right? Yeah, it's true. Yes. Now that you're looking back, I'm looking back into my life. Yes, that's exactly. I think coming from Brazil, being brought up in Brazil, we are more naturally open to not everybody, but you know, to to divination and things like that you know and i had other not just my grandma and my uncle i had a cousin who was a medium you know but i was curious to know there was a, this curiosity mm. to know to know to knowing things yeah. you know uh but i i felt very i think the only time i resisted was, was the beginning and then when i started to give readings to people i started there was a little bit of resistance how to do it how to actually be available to read, you know, and uh, how to speak and things like that, you know, because it's coinciding with the other part of that was acting, you know, like, yeah. how can I? And then at some point, they're like, you know what, I'm just going to surrender. <laughs> yeah. I don't know where this is going to go. I'm just going to go with the flow. I just know that I'm going to be at the right space at the right time. So that's how, you know, that was the beginning. 
you know, and then... Uh, so when did you first start doing, I mean, I'm guessing, was it in, in, in the class that you were taking, the intuitive class that you started doing readings? Did you do them out, outside of class then too? Were you? They, they were very strict, you know, in terms of when you could start giving people's readings because they wanted to make sure that you went through all the steps mm -hmm. and all, which by now I forgot a lot of them, but yeah. <laughs> I still use a lot of them to protect myself, you know, I... Definitely used a lot. I still use so many other tools, but things come more naturally now. I just don't yeah. have to do A, B, C, D, E. Okay, I'm ready. It's just like, okay, okay, I'm just... Yeah, and that, I mean, and that's steps. I mean, I look at it like cooking, right? At first, you might need a recipe, and you go through it, and maybe right, the first yeah. few times you need the recipe, you know, because you, you don't want to screw it up, or, you know, there's a certain order to things, but then after a while, you throw away the recipe, and you can make yeah. the pancakes without <laughs> it. It's fine, you know? That's a, that's a great way to, yeah, yeah, to phrase it. That was, so it's pretty much like that. So, so they were very strict. So I was doing just the readings first, just with my eyes closed, just like clairvoyancy. You know, how people, how they taught me over there. But as I was starting to do that, I started seeing resistance from some clients. And someone told me, Fabio, I actually think people feel more comfortable if you show them something because they are not seeing what you're saying. And even though the, 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 the readings were very accurate, you know, and I was like, okay. I was like, okay, so I was learning. I was doing this, then this other journey with the- Another with two the, year journey? <laughs> yeah, with a girl from, you know, the tarot. And then she was talking to me about tarot. And then I was like, I just went to the Bodhi, the Bodhi tree. Mm -hmm. yeah, And I bought a tarot card there. And I remember that I came home, like, I'm just going to learn tarot. And then I put everything else, like, oh my God, this is way more intense than what I think it's going to be. And, but naturally, I just started doing more and more than started reading friends that were comfortable with me. Hey, do you want me just to see? Like, let me just try. So I'd go and then I started taking classes either online or like little seminars. And for a while, I kind of developed my own style, yeah. you know, without pretty much following the rules of, you know, you have to do the spread this way or that way. So it just seemed really what stood out to me. So I was using a lot of the clairvoyancy with, with the tarot. And eventually, then the cards became, they started to have meanings to myself that sometimes are different to, to other people. But then started using, and then I start, and then as I start to see that, uh, you know, intuitively, I already knew a lot. So then I needed to dive in and learn more about tarot. So I'd go and study, pick a book or study with somebody that I knew who would give me a reading. Mm. And then I started studying from how people would give me readings. Yeah. Because I started learning from their mistakes I was yeah. just, or from where they're doing something right. And you're and, like, wow, that's, that's spot on. Or, ooh, I, man, they were using some projection. <laughs> I got to be more mindful that I don't work through my filters. <laughs> exactly. So there was a lot of, you know, then I started understanding why am I great with one person and the other one I get stuck and what. And then I started learning a lot of things, you know, then after all these years, like, okay, so I'm not a tarot reader for everybody. I'm not meant to read everybody. And I don't think everybody's meant to read everyone. I think really you, what, just like when I go outside and I make a friend and we have a vibe. Yeah, right? you're not going to have that same vibe with everyone, With right? everybody. And I mean, like, you know, you know there's... How many, you know, hairdressers are there? There's certain hairdressers for different people, different styles, different vibes, you know, clothes, yeah. right? Not every t-shirt's gonna look great on everybody, you know, like you gotta, you know, so it's okay yes. to, you know, I think that, that we get stuck in any type of profession. Like, you know, there's attorneys that are good for certain people, not for others. Yes. There's restaurants that are amazing cuisine for certain people, not for others, right? Mm -hmm. You know, if somebody's a vegan, they go they go to, you know, this best barbecue restaurant, they're probably not gonna be as happy or somebody that loves me going to the vegan restaurant, you know? Like and so having that, right? Yes. And really understanding who gets attracted to you is right for you, right? Yes, exactly. So I so but I didn't know that at the beginning, you know. Yeah. I thought I had to read everybody the same. But then I start seeing how some of like one of someone that was my reader for like 15 years was great with me and give me so much insight. And I recommend it to somebody else and they're like, oh my God, that was awful. And I just didn't know like what is, so obviously I started perceiving and paying attention to the little things, you know. And then I started learning also what people liked when I was giving readings. I started learning how people were getting either drained or where they felt powerless, 
you know, and when I'd get a reading and I felt all the powers taken away from me. So it's so, like, okay, so we have to start doing things differently here. If I'm giving a private reading, it's one thing. If I'm giving a reading with 30 people in a circle, which I do a lot, you know, um, then I have to approach it in a different way. So that's why I always, if I'm doing a circle, I always start with a meditation mm. to ground everybody. You know, okay, let's just make sure, because if you receive a message that you're not prepared, at least you're not going to be like bawling halfway through. Because yeah. I have been to so many circles where people are bawling too much. And I was like, oh my God, this is like, and then you go home sobbing and it's just like, okay, it's great that you're releasing it. Yeah. But then you feel, you're feeling, there's this feeling of powerless mm -hmm. to, you know. So, um, so, so I started doing the meditation in the beginning to make sure everybody was grounded. Then start including things, you know, like, just watch your judgment mm -hmm. when you're hearing someone else's reading, you know, because people will ask, should I, you know, should I get divorced? You know, should I, in, in, a, in a tarot circle, you know, people yeah. ask big questions like that. So I um, start including things for people to be more aware of their own energy. And then I always end with, uh, I always end with um, like a meditation where we release the reading, because I think it's important for you if you're coming to get a reading that you feel that you are getting your power back. Yeah. You know, because I do feel that it's a lot of, you know, getting a reading, you're surrendering a lot of your power to somebody else. And that's where things get can get really muddy, right? That's when somebody can be like, oh, but if I go this way, it can perhaps you gain more from this person. Mm. That's where the bad rap came, you know. Yeah, those were the gypsies with the bright light signs on the, <laughs> on the street, you know. Like, you are a curse, come to me for another thousand dollars. I will protect you for a month and then you'll have to come and spend another thousand dollars for another month, you know. But that's so, true, you know, and there's, you know, but it, it's important that you bring that up because there's many different ways. And I mean, we gave the analogies of other different professions, but, there, there's people that are in integrity and lead from the heart and yes. really want to help and heal and and leave the person that they sit across from in a better place. And then there's some people that are opportunistic that are in it for money and power. Yeah. And, you know, and I mean, I say the same thing about the medical profession, right? There's doctors that really care. And then there's doctors that just want to write prescriptions and get kickbacks, right? You know, so, you're right, you're you know, right. There's, right. There, you have this in every profession. And yeah. I say that over and over again, because it feels like the metaphysical professions get the bad the, end the, of the yeah. of the stick. But if yeah. you can see so clearly that it also is happening in what is perceived as credible professions uh -huh. like attorneys like doctors you know people can yeah. keep you on on the, oh let me just do another billable hour you know like <laughs> you really need to do that or i'm gonna take the case and go a little further really you know or did you just drain me you know yes no i mean that's a great point that you just made right now so i anyway started you know seeing how from doing many readings, from doing many circles with people, and also to being to a lot of circles, start seeing where things were missing, and start use, including that, just like, you know, making sure that the person feel that, you know, they have their power back, that whatever reading I give them, even if something doesn't align or it's something they don't want to hear, something that's going to be hard for them, that at the end of the day, they feel they have their, it's their willpower, it's their life, it's yeah. their choices, you know, regardless of what the cards are saying, even though the cards, you know, they can be very healing in a way, but they can be very sharp. Yeah. You know, so, and I started talking about things more about, you know, my voice and how, you know, you're going to go home if you read something, if you heard something you didn't like, you're going to hear my voice in your head for like days. So like how to release that feeling of that voice, that echo in your ear, because you're going to be with that echo. It's like, he's cheating on you. He's cheating on you. He's cheating on you. Yeah. <laughs> you know, especially if you ask in front of everybody if he's cheating on you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, so... Um, so and some people just want to hear what they want to hear. And you, you mean, you could give somebody an information. I've seen it, whether in circles or seeing clients and things like that, where I've noticed sometimes if they want to hear one thing, they hear one thing, right? And you can get, feed it to them like this. You can say it like this. No, that person never said that. They just <laughs> said this. <laughs> I, yeah, yeah. And I've been guilty of that. I raised well, my hand because, no, you know, everybody has. I have I mean, been guilty of like, yes, I want to hear it this way only. No, but, but people yeah. form attachments. Yeah, and yeah. so then we filter through yeah. our filtration system and say, 
you know, we want, we want that, th you know, we're in a bad space. We want you to say that everything's going to be bad, right? Or we, we want everything to be said that it's good. And you say th something and they hear and then they come back and say, well, you said that everything was going to be good. No. You know, I mean, I don't, I don't personally do readings, but I've been mean, here. Like, you no, know, I mean, like, I feel like you're doing readings because like, <laughs> you yeah. understand. I mean, sure, you've been around. People have got tons of readings, obviously, uh, being here. I've owned metaphysical stores for over a decade and <laughs> almost a decade and a half. I, 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 I've been around the block. <laughs> so, well, I, it's interesting because I always say, you know, I have to, you know, you can't, I, my flow of clients, I'm always have to be, I cannot get too close to them as much as I love them because I know by year three, I'm going to say something they don't want to hear and they am not going to hear from them for like a year and a half. Mm. So even that that's something they know it's true, but they are not ready to hear or they don't want to hear. And then it, it like, it hurts me, but then I start to do the separation where now I'm a little bit more I still feel a lot of love and I love helping people and and it's so good to hear when somebody's like you know I really you I was in a, a lot of pain last week and I just needed something and I came here and you told me what I needed to hear or this or that it's like or you helped me through this phase or that it's it gives me a, a feeling of let's say accomplishment but a feeling of wholesomeness or a feeling of being good or doing something important that I didn't have when I was doing acting, which I still love. But acting is a different kind of, let's say, you know, a uh, trophy that I get, right? Yeah. It gives you a different kind of trophy. Uh, but then, you know, just when somebody walks away because they're not ready to hear, there's always that feeling, oh. So anyway, now I'm a little bit more, I, 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 I accept the love, mm -hmm. but I also keep some distance. But then that's the thing that I just learned with time, but people will walk away after. If they've been your client for three, four years, they if you say something they don't want to hear at yeah. some point, you probably won't hear from them for a long time. But it might be exactly what they need to hear so yeah. they can start going through whatever. Whatever they need, they to, need to. Right. Yeah. You enjoying this so far? Did you forget to subscribe? Make sure to do so. It takes two seconds. Just press that little button. The red one. You know the one. Just press it. Little like. All right. Enjoy the rest of this content. But it might be exactly what they need to hear so yeah. they can start going through whatever whatever they need, they to, need to right yeah. and i mean it's the same as like you know i, work, I work, do a lot of therapy work with addicts and alcoholics and you know it says it's you know sometimes you know people need to hit that rock bottom or sometimes that enabling needs to stop right mm -hmm. it's like you keep on you know families that continue to support and cause the person to continue to live within their addiction doesn't necessarily it's not helping yes yeah, you yeah. know and you know that cutting off those finances or that lifeline or cutting off that like hey everything's good no i'm gonna tell you you need to make some changes right you know you need a shift this is your the problem here <laughs> if you notice the last five men like the common denominator is you. you know? Maybe you need to change. <laughs> Actually, so fun. Usually, the problem when they walk away, they'll come back. Is like it's when I tell them, yeah, he's not that into you. So <laughs> they'll go and they'll look for somebody. They'll go from psychic to psychic to psychic till they find somebody. That happens, you know. Mm -hmm. But there are other, you know. I'm, I'm I'm happy with what I do. I'm happy with the readings and stuff. You yeah. <laughs> so then, so you take these classes and mm -hmm. then you start to study also tarot. Yes. Sounds like you were doing readings prior where you were just doing more channeled readings, yes. uh, grabbing information, yes. psychic, like uh -huh. what would I would perceive as more true psychic readings. And then uh -huh. you started bringing in the tools, one to give you a little bit more information, but more so is, is that visual aid for your clients. Exactly. And there was a period there where actually... I didn't have, when I was merging the two with them, that I actually did not have to use the tarot so much. I could just, just close my eyes and then look at a couple of cards and tell the person, you know. Uh, but then what started to happen, I don't remember in which year, is that then I started to see things on the tarot clearer. I started seeing more images or objects. Mm. And then those objects that sometimes I wouldn't see them clairvoyantly and that start to rely a little bit more on the uh, on the tarot, which is interesting because I have some people who, who come to me 
from when I started and they say, oh, I want a reading, but I, I want the old way, <laughs> I want the yeah. clairvoyant. But now with the tarot, you know, I've seen so much, you know, and I, when I'm doing the circles, I always, I mean, with the circle, obviously you need the tarot, but uh, so there was a point where things were merging, you know, and it was, there was a muddy, but it was, it was a cute muddy season, let's say there, you know, where things were, I was combining the two of them, but now I, rely more on the tarot than clairvoyantly. Yeah, usually clairvoyantly is just, I use it for myself or some friends. Okay. You know, if I need to know something about me, if some, when somebody's gonna call, I just usually just close my eyes. I need that information. I just need that information. It's like, oh, is the lender from the banks gonna call me? When's that gonna happen, you know? Yeah. Monday. It's not the, the lender that I thought I was gonna call, but it wasn't the other lander, but, <laughs> <laughs> but it happened on Monday. But it happened on Monday. <laughs> yeah. You know, so I, I use both. They're very much like uh, a part of my day, you know, my daily life. And so tell me a little mm -hmm. bit more about these workshops and, and classes that you do. Cause oh, I mean, yes. we have one coming up called Abundant Venus. Yes, oh my God, I love that one. So that one I created because I felt, you know, coming from Brazil, people are more sensual. They're a little bit more, you know, like more in touch with their bodies. And I felt there was so much shame in the States mm -hmm. in regards to sexuality or sensuality. So I created one that was more fun, that had music, you know, that people could dance and they would go and kind of just, you know, how do you feel when you're dancing? Like, because some people are very awkward. I don't feel good, you know. So, and go and just, just journal and do a questionnaire about how what are your you know your strengths or your strengths or weaknesses per se but what you feel you know where you need to grow more or mm -hmm. you're pretty strong already and so it was a, a meditation there's music involved where people get to dance you know you stand up and you dance then you go and you journal then there's a sound bath and then uh, in the end I do the tarot circle with my naughty decks I have like all the I bring all my naughty decks out. If somebody wants to ask something very sexual, I will be answering because it's all out there, you know. Um, and it's more about empowering them. It's more about empowering that part of you that uh, sometimes you never gave yourself permission to empower. Mm. You know, that so becoming connected and aware with your body, with your sensuality, your sexuality, mm. and bringing that in through a, a phase of of dance and connection and intuitive. Intuitive and, and also making sure that you are spiritually connected to that, you know, because when you're dancing, you're very, you're flowing with your spirit, you know? Yeah. It's a dance. So, you know, it's a very natural form of, of, of expressing yourself and exp your soul to express itself in your higher self. So I, I wanted to connect the part of you that actually is divine with the part of you that's sexual and needs to feed the body or it needs to feel a part of you like a healthy ego. Yeah. You know, sometimes you do need that little attention or you need something to make you feel good to walk. And sometimes the only way you can find that part of you that's sensual is through divination or through your, through your spirit. You know, so I want to combine the two of them. So that's what that one is all about. <laughs> Love it. And then, so then you also do tarot circles. Yes. So I and do. And those can be, you know, 10, 20, 30 people or more, you know, and what's that like? Is it just like group readings or, you know? So I usually start uh, there on the West side and I usually start um, with a the meditation. There are usually anything between five to 25, 30, depending on the group, you know, and depending on how many people there are, you get more questions, mm -hmm. you know, to ask. So I do, I make sure that, like I said before, I ground everyone. Uh, we don't get to lay down. You're, you're sitting up the whole time just with your eyes closed. Okay. And then I go around and you get to ask questions, but you're asking in front of everybody. Mm -hmm. So you have to be Open. Oh, open. And I always say, you know, give yourself the permission to ask the question because chances are at the end, somebody will walk away. When everything's on, they're like, I didn't ask the question that I wanted to ask. <laughs> and I was like, okay, give yourself the permission to do so. Don't bring a close friend if you want to ask that question and you don't want your close friend to know what the question was. Strangers, nobody's going to judge you. You know, I mean, yeah. they made you momentarily, but, you know, so I... And those are, you know, it's pretty much more about, you know, I pick some cards for the for the group, 
the major kind of cards for the group, you know, and then I go around. Uh, if it's at night, it's a little, the, the lights are a little bit lower just with candles. <laughs> yeah. Super nice. And he thinks that he's just doing it on the west side. We're going to try to get it here. <laughs> <laughs> so, so then I do, uh, then we close, you know, with the release of the group, of the energy of the group. I make sure that people really don't, like I said, don't take the echo home, the echo of my voice. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I think I, I find that group group uh, message circles, whether they're psychic or mediumship or, in your case, a tarot, um, it's really good for people that, you know, w are a little bit weary mm -hmm. or, you know, maybe they don't have a lot of questions. Maybe they have one question. Uh -huh. They also want to do it with a group, a family, a friend or a, another person. Yes. Like I find that it's a nice like kind of first step in. And then most oh, of the yes, time people true. then like to work one on one with people after that. But I, I find that it's a it really works well for this type of like social experience, this group, like people that are a little nervous, people that might be a little skeptical, people that are just curious. Um, it seems to like be this really good, you know, kind of introduction into that metaphysical intuitive world. That's interesting that you say that because I do get a lot of newcomers, you know, a yeah. lot of people who have never done before and they all, they only come through the uh, through tarot circle. Yeah. Hardly ever I get somebody who's never done tarot to come to me and do a private session. Yeah. They start with in the group, then they come for a private session. Yeah, because it's like, okay, now I see, I can understand you, got the message here, other people. All right, maybe there is something more to this. Maybe I want to ask a little bit more mm -hmm. questions, get some more clarity. So I find that those are one of the most beneficial, like at first experiences into the intuitive world. Yeah, and I, I love doing the tarot circle. It's so much fun. I love the music that I put on. I love... I love I that you like make it an experience. Like oh, you see, this like you know everything's an experience. So we're gonna we're gonna dance, and then we're going to get you connected with your body, and then I'm gonna draw, <laughs> and you're gonna you know. And you also do an event for the LGBTQ. Yes. So oh, this one's so much fun. So this one is new moon in Gemini. It's a flirty new moon, mm -hmm. you know, and um, and then with a love spell. Ah, so, we're so gonna spells be, and intention setting. Yeah, so we're going to be using the energy of the new moon to create something that, you know, it can be either for romantic love or for self-love. Yeah. You know, and uh, I've done the love spell before. I've done the love spell for myself. It worked. <laughs> yeah. It was a lot of fun. It's a fun, fun uh, ceremony that, you know, again, we do the sound bath. Then this one can be a little bit more or a little bit longer, depending how many people are there, because we do the whole spell. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we work the energy of the universe with the, 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 the energy of the new moon. So there is there are steps to it, you know, to doing the whole clearing the energy, setting the intention, setting the intention, everything that we're going to use, you know, what we are creating, you know, and then the reading in the end. And there's a tarot reading in the end, you know, and um, this one is so much fun. It's super fun. I find that's kind of a an upbeat way of, of of finding love for yourself or just playing with the romantic aspect of love and believing in love, you know. Ah. You know, and, and I think that... And I like all of the different elements to it. You said that there's a sound bath component yeah, too. Do yes. you play the bowls? Or I do play, yes, I play the bowls. I play the instruments, you know. Obviously, because the uh, uh, this especially the, uh, the love spell is such a long one, it's pretty much an hour to create, playing with using all the instruments of the spell, all the tools of the spell. So the sound bath is a little bit shorter yeah, yeah, than, yeah. than others, you know. It just puts you, drops you in. Yes, and then, and then we, we take it from there. But it's so much fun, and every time I do it, everybody comes. Oh, amazing. <laughs> Love it. It's everybody shows up. It's super fun, and I can't wait for that one, because that one's, you know, LGBTQ+, it's going to be pride. I think it's going to be, a, like, a lot of fun. And uh, beginning of summer. Yeah. But <laughs> Setting then... the intention for love in the summer. <laughs> but I'm, I'm really enjoying the lightheartedness. You know, oh, that mm -hmm. that you bring to your work, right? Oh. Because, you know, sometimes, you know, and there's a place, there's a place for everybody, like we yeah. talked about earlier. Um, but oftentimes there's a lot of seriousness with we're doing serious work here and like everything needs to be, you know, like yeah, and, and 
you know, that that's okay. And yes, it's true. But, you know, I resonate a lot with the lighthearted energy because life isn't that serious. I mean, we make it serious, but it's not. And when you can and embrace and have a little bit more fun and laughter with even, you know, quote unquote, serious topics or questions or information, you can have like this playful energy for life. And that renews people. It also connects them with their self. It gives them this, and it's, it's fun. Like, let's just say that, you know, it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I mean, thank you. You know, I, I try to use, you know, like I, I think there was kind of gift coming from Brazil to be more lighthearted about spirituality. You know what I mean? Although some people are more serious in Brazil. But I think being doing this for almost like 20 years, being more yeah. of a, into this journey kind of gives you like, you don't feel this heavy thing. Like everything has to be so serious. You're just like, okay, I just want to enjoy it. Yeah. I want everybody to enjoy with me. Let's have a great day. Let's have a great sound bath. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and create a great positive energy. You know, if anything, if you feel like at the end of the ceremony, your life is still is shit because you can't change things from, you know, overnight. At least you're going to come out, you're going to feel good. But at least for a good two hours where you're believing that you can get through this, you know, hurricane of whatever you're going through, through that phase of awakening your life, you know. Because yeah. I've been there. I've been where, you know, like feeling happy and feeling joyful at some point. That, that completely was gone. It was gone for a few years where I go to a party and I wouldn't dance and I wasn't myself. And it was hard to... I was like, like mm. I'd go home and like, where, where did Fabio go? Where, did, where, where did he go? You yeah. know. And then somehow I came back, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and here I am. <laughs> we all go on a journey somewhere else to only to rediscover and come right back to ourselves, right? You yeah. know, it's the um, alchemist, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, you go, you go on this journey only to find that where you were heading was there yourself the whole time. Yes. Yeah. I mean, like it was, I remember, I really remember just looking at myself like, oh my God, what happened? I love, I used to just love going out and dancing. It's like, what? I, I don't like any songs anymore. You know, mm -hmm. even my favorite songs, I don't like listening to them. But no, here I am. Yeah, play it on. Let's just blast it on the way to, <laughs> to liberate yourself. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Oh, now I know that you brought some decks. You said that you used some interesting decks, right? Oh, you have yes. some unique ones that you brought with. Do today? you have this one? I don't. I never know their names. I'm sorry, the artists. But do you know this one? Let me I don't see. think you guys have this one. I don't think we do. But this is cool. It's like oh it's like a crow, like you know. Oh my god! No, this is amazing. This is yeah. a beautiful deck, and this is great for healing. And that one is great for uh, female energy. Then I have this one. It's the TV show. And amazing. Lots of animals. There's some people in there, too. We don't then... know what they are. But <laughs> we'll find out. <laughs> then there is this one. Oh, it's a... right here. It's... It is says it... it's the Hush Tarot. <laughs> Right in front of me. <laughs> it was right there the whole time. Advertised on the back. This one is TV shows. Oh, it's really? really? Yeah, and it's all TV shows. Amazing for work. Amazing Aww. for work. I help people. Oops. Well, especially it, since your was... background is in acting and entertainment. So, you know, like, this is right up your alley, I'm seeing. That one is actually really good if you want to book. Like, I've helped people book jobs with that one. And it's obviously, you know, the one I just used it at the beach, I think. Uh, this one, I don't know the name. I think you guys have this one. The thing is, like, I actually throw away the boxes and I just look and then because I, I just trust myself uh -huh. because I've learned some, you know, about all the symbols and stuff that I can just pick it up. But this one is really pretty, too. That's cool. I have a, I have a I like great... the uniqueness. So. Oh, that one is. Yeah, no, that one is. I helped. There are some uh, clients that come and I only use that one for work. I did usually you guys have it here. It's the gay deck, the gay tarot uh -huh. deck. That's a great one for work too. Uh -huh. I helped a lot of people book jobs, especially for acting and stuff like and stuff yeah. like that. With that one. This one feels so thick. Is this like a standard? It's I think it is a, yes, it's very yeah, that one is like a big either maybe the cards it's are a really standard. Thick. It's it's just that I think the paper is a little bit thicker. Okay. Um I love that one is new. I'm just starting to use it. This one is great for this one is a um, 
So I don't know what that one's going to be used for yet. I usually learn as I read people. Mm. So usually they do come with a theme. They usually, each deck eventually after a few months with me, I learn they have a theme, you know. Oh, that's cool. So this one is for pirate and this pirate one is great for traveling. If you're thinking because pirates and traveling, you know, but if you're I like that, that you, you have the different decks for the different things. Like this yeah. one I'm using if, it, if yes. people are doing, have mm -hmm. work questions, this one travel. This one is great. If you want to leave your lover behind, that's the one to kind of use it because you're going to have to travel outside of your house, you know, if you're going to leave the house. Yeah. <laughs> but that one is great for traveling, it's especially like, if you're... It's like this pirate one. I don't know if you guys can see. Super cool. Especially if you're going abroad, that one's a great one. I do have this one. So when you do a reading mm -hmm. for somebody, how mm -hmm. many decks do you normally incorporate? Do you t t stick with just one and you feel it out? So it? usually on the tarot circle, I bring two because again, it goes back to someone feeling powered, right? Mm -hmm. So if I'm going to strip, pretty much you're going to give me all of your power for me to channel information. The least I could do is give you at least a choice to pick the deck you want. Wow. So at least you have that power to pick the deck or at least the, the deck that you want to ask one this for one question this for a second question you know what i mean yeah so uh usually for the circles i bring two so i have a lot of decks at home <laughs> then uh for the person then i just ask if it's a 30 minute reading it depends i usually bring like four or five and i ask them what they want to know and if i feel that some way maybe there's a better one inside of the house or you know or if you're doing through facetime you know then i go and i just reach out and pick another one wow you know but i i like to hear to give the whole thing is about the experience with me whether it's through the circle or in a private set i want to make sure that you f give the empowerment back as much as i can because again it is Sometimes you come for a reading and you're ready or stripped from your powers because yeah. everything has been stripped away from you. So the least I could do is just help give you a little thing, feed you with a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. You know, so anyway, so I do have like about 50 or 60 decks at home. So I have a lot. Wow, of Wow, that's a large collection. It's a large you collection. You might have more decks than we sell here. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so Fabio, where can people find you? They can find me on Instagram. It's super fabuloso. Ah, <laughs> <I love it. laughs> they can find me here and my events here. Uh, then uh, my tarot circles on the west side are at Into Me Sea. Okay. And then they are at Hallowed Ground. Those are the two places that I do my tarot circles. And then if you follow me on my Instagram, you can also have the option to send me your email and then I can send you my newsletter with the events that I'm doing that month, my upcoming events. Awesome. I usually always have a little, um, uh, what do you call it? A selection of music. What do you call it? Oh God, I forgot the word now. Anyway. Soundtrack? Yes. I usually have a soundtrack for, you know, the theme of the month that I'm, cause I usually do a little prediction. Oh, cute. So I have like a little soundtrack for that. <laughs> Amazing. You know, and uh, so that's how you can find me or, you know, can find me walking my dogs, uh, you know, in Topanga. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. Well, this is so nice. I'm really looking forward to your classes that you're doing here oh, and you. his tarot circle that he's doing here as well. Okay. And not just on the west side. No. I, I would so be it if, if you want to. But yes, doing lots of different classes and workshops with us. I like the fun and the the also what it gives to people the help the transformation the connection to their self mm -hmm. the ability to manifest you know and so yeah i hope everybody can join in for at least one of fabio's classes in the future or connect with him and get his newsletters and predictions and and possible one-on-ones with him um but thank you well thank you <laughs> so until next time please like subscribe comment um most people are listening to this on, on Spotify or iTunes. You know, we're trying to get the YouTube up a little bit more. So if you're, you are tuning in on YouTube or if you didn't know that the video one is available on YouTube, go check it out and put a comment or a like or a thumbs up or whatnot there. So we can start generating a little bit more traffic in the YouTube algorithms. Thank you so much. Until next time. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. If you enjoyed this conversation, please like it, subscribe, and share it with your friends. If you want to hear more about what we have going on and happening online or in, in the neighborhood, check out liberateyourself.com and sign up for our mailing list. 
Uh, also follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Liberate Yourself. It's you are self. You are S-E-L-F. Until next time, be powerful, be magical, and be free. <laughs>